Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. We have x squared plus 2x squared minus x plus 1 squared equals 55 and we're going to be solving for x values. So the expression on the left hand side kind of reminds me difference of two squares. So we can go ahead and factor it. Is that going to be helpful? Maybe, maybe not. We're not necessarily looking for integer solutions, so even when you factor it, you're still going to have 55 on the right-hand side. So that kind of tells me it's not going to be very helpful if you use that formula. Even though it looks like difference of two squares will be helpful, uh, it probably isn't. So here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm going to expand everything, and that's going to give me a quartic equation. Let's go ahead and do that. So if you square x squared plus 2x, you're going to get x to the fourth power plus 4x cubed plus 4x squared. And then you can also factor out x and square that way if you want or just square it like a plus b. Minus, if you subtract x plus b squared, which is x squared plus 2x plus 1, from here, you're going to get x squared minus x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 55. Let's go ahead and arrange these terms. We get x to the fourth plus 4x cubed. 4x squared minus x squared becomes 3x squared minus 2x. Minus 1 minus 55 gives us minus 56, and that equals 0. Now, this is a quartic equation. Do you want to solve it? I don't think so. Do you want to use the quartic formula? That's way too complicated, way too long. So, you could try factoring it if there are integer factors, but we're going to use another approach. If you look at the original problem, so let's call this first method, and this is not a good way to approach it. Because this problem is a special type of problem, a math Olympiad problem, so we should use a special approach. And this is what it is. If you look at this expression carefully, you can expand partially. So like, let's say this is our second method. Just leave this alone. Okay and then expand x plus 1 squared, but keep it inside parentheses, okay? What is x plus 1 squared? We just talked about it. It is x squared plus 2x plus 1, and that equals 55. Now, take a good look at this expression. What does that tell you? If it tells you to substitute, you're on the right track. As you know, in so many of my videos, I use substitution, it's so powerful, I keep telling you it's powerful and powerful and powerful. So, we should use it as much as possible. In this case, the stuff that repeats is x squared plus 2x. So whatever you see, and obviously substitution is also used in integrals, it's used in differential equations, in so many different subjects. Let's call this something. How about t? So. We're going to write t squared minus t plus 1, and that is equal to 55. So if you expand it, you're going to get t squared minus t minus 1 is equal to 55. And then if you add 1 to both sides, t squared minus t is going to be 56. The reason why I wrote it that way is because I want to show you a way to factor this. So t times t minus 1 is equal to 56. Now think about it. A lot of times we use this idea for solving exponential equations, logarithmic equations, or a mixture of different functions. But we could also use it for basic polynomials. 56 can be written as the product of two consecutive integers, uh, such as t and t minus 1. How about this? 8 times 7. Awesome. Now, this tells you that t equals 8 is a solution, doesn't it? But it, there should be two solutions. t equals 8. Here's the trick. 8, minus, 8 times 7 is equivalent to negative, a, negative 7 times negative 8. Since our smaller number is negative 8 in this case, the larger one will be negative 7. So that also tells you that t equals negative 7 is another solution. So here's the trick. When you factor it into two consecutive integers, the t in this case is the smaller number, which I'm sorry, the larger number, which is 8. The other solution will be the opposite of the other factor. Do you know what I'm talking about? Hopefully you do. It's negative 7. It's the other number, but the opposite. 
So those are going to be the t values. Uh, was I looking for t? No, I wasn't. I was looking for x, so let's go ahead and back substitute. So t is equal to 8. Let's go ahead and write it down. t is equal to x squared plus 2x, right? And it's equal to 8. Let's start with t equals 8. So now this is another quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and solve it. x squared plus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. You could use the exact same strategy, 2 times 4, factor out x, so on and so forth. Well, let's solve it a little differently. Find two numbers whose product is negative 8 and whose sum is positive 2. Those numbers are 4 and negative 2. Those are factors, so I can write it as x plus 4 times x minus 2 equals 0. And from here, I get x equals negative 4 and x equals 2. Okay, so two solutions from here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other option. So we're going to check these solutions at the end. I'm also going to tell you a little bit of something, uh, a different approach. So that's one of the equations. This is for t equals 8. How about t equals negative 7? Let's go ahead and do that. t equals negative 7. That equals x squared plus 2x. But that just means x squared plus 2x plus 7 is equal to 0. Uh-oh, that's not good. Let me still write it the same way because I would like to use a different method for this one. You see, every time we can use a different method. And I want to use the, um, what is it called? Completing the square. Yes, that's what it is. Add 1 to both sides. The left-hand side becomes a perfect square, and that's perfect. And right-hand side becomes a negative number. Great. We have something squared equals a negative. You know, this is not going to happen in the real world. So we kind of have to go to the complex world. And you can write the negative 6 as square root of 6i squared. Right? Obviously, negative 6 has two square roots. Square root of 6i is one of them. But it doesn't matter because the plus minus will take care of that. So from here we get x plus 1 equals plus minus square root of 6i. So we're considering both complex roots of negative 6. Make sense? Great. So, and so that's kind of interesting. We're taking like real roots on the left, but complex roots on the right. Anyways, x is an unknown, so we can only do so much. From here, if you subtract 1, you get x equals negative 1 plus minus square root of 6i. So that's going to be another pair of solutions. In total, we got four solutions. Let's go ahead and write them down. Negative 4, 2, negative 1 plus root 6i, and negative 1 minus root 6i. And since uh, we had a quartic to begin with, uh, it makes sense to have four solutions. Now take a look at the original problem. I just want to show you an alternative approach, which is not always the best but sometimes it's the only approach. So there's something called RRT, and I think we recently talked about it. It stands for rational root theorem. So if there are any rational roots, and since this is monic, they need to divide the constant, okay? So we only need to look at factors of or divisors of 56, and there aren't that many. I think it's uh, 2 to the 3rd times 7 to the 1st. So there's going to be 4 times 2 times 2, which is only 16 numbers you need to check. But guess what? Once you find the factor and looking at the results, I can say that, hey, x equals 2 is a good candidate. I would probably check that first, like after 1 and negative 1. That's one of the things you have to look at the coefficients. Anyways, so this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.